Right. Today we are going to look at um, the very very interesting topic. Okay. I think you have learned about this topic since your elementary schools. Okay. One way or the other, it has been talked about repeatedly because it is a very important process without which probably none of us the humans or other animals are able to thrive and dominate um, this planet okay um, I hope you are doing okay with um, the lessons last week okay we will go through the lesson last week about the um, seed germination, um, dormancy and stuff uh, during lab time. I'll give you a small tutorial uh, to, to help you with that. Um, but um, that shouldn't be too hard, okay? And But for this photosynthesis, I suggest that you pay att close attention to this because it is interesting because it is multidisciplinary. Okay, you get a number of science disciplines just by learning photosynthesis. You need to know things about uh, biology, chemistry, physics, and also to some degree some thermodynamic and stuff. You know, especially when you are talking at um, leaf level. Okay, right. This the sim simple straight advice that I can give to you. If you only focus on photosynthesis alone throughout your study, throughout your career, that can take you a very long way. Okay. Um, I photosynthesis is one of the things that I focused on. So. Um, if you ask around in the faculty or even at, at UPM, probably they are going to point uh, right back at me. Okay, because like you can see now that the slide, the first slide here, the opening slide here, it doesn't say UPM because these slides are used to um, to uh, give training and consultation at this um, uh, company. Okay, so not only that, uh, you are going to be um, highly coveted, highly desired by other peoples, but you can help many other peoples um, doing various stuff, just because you know photosynthesis, because it's not always about plants, okay um, you're working with bacteria you're working with um, engineering, you know all this, the solar panel, the photovoltaic panels they get inspired from photosynthesis actually Right, so this thing, by learning it, it does get you very far. Okay, right. So let's get uh, started. <clears throat> so the reason it's called machinery, it's because photosynthesis it's not um, one simple process. Okay, it is um, the combination of reactions. Okay, that's why you keep hearing um, common terminologies like um, light reactions, dark reactions, and so on. I'll explain to you in a bit uh, why that is so. Okay, um, even though plants are highly associated with photosynthesis, not all plants uh, photosynthesize. Okay, because some plants are actually parasitic. Uh, parasite. They are parasite like the plant uh, mistletoe. Uh, let me write that. Mistletoe. Okay. They are parasite. Okay. Um, a common example in our country is um, the the dalu plant. Okay. This is also a parasitic. Okay. Because plants are able. Most plants are able to do photosynthesis, they are autotroph, meaning that they can make their own food by combining the basic building blocks. Okay, To some degree, we human, we can 
make our own food as well but not all of them okay we can make our own vitamin D by exposing our skin to sunlight and by ingesting some cholesterol but we can't um, manufacture of, of, of vitamin C okay you can make vitamin D you know call it calciferol but you cannot make vitamin C ascorbic acid okay we, we just not designed to, to do that so we need to obtain our vitamin C from um, external sources either from plants or other organisms okay there are many types of plants or photosynthetic organisms um, the simplest one come from the mosses ferns you know and, and as well as uh, other flowering plants kelp as well um, you know the, the seaweed kelp um, actually even though it's called um, the, the green algae they are not really plants per se uh, by definition because they have their own kingdom okay and then you have euglena and also the cyanobacteria and these all even though they are from different kingdoms they all are autotrophic they do photosynthesis okay and when we talk about photosynthesis because it is a process any process whether it is artificial or natural it must be energized to get an the energy needed to run reactions in photosynthesis light is used okay so this is why I said earlier it is multidisciplinary when you learn photosynthesis you see um, one field of physics is very close to photosynthesis namely the light and wavelength okay so if you um, look at the Sun you keep saying that oh the Sun is uh, the color is white or rather um, yellowish because it's the combination of other colors and that is true okay the Sun ray that comes from the Sun it comes in all sort of colors in the universe colors that you can see colors that you cannot see the colors that you can see that coming up from the Sun we call it the visible light and it is a very short amount of the entire spectrum okay from the wavelength of 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer okay from the Sun it comes out from here 0 0.01 nanometer all the way to here and even beyond or even before this Sun contain all of this spectrum but you cannot see the x-ray the color of the x-ray can you see the color of the x-ray can't do that the gamma rays you can't see okay but you can see the color of the visible light the rainbow color okay but however, when you go beyond um, the visible light range, beyond 700 nanometer, you can't see it again because the um, the retina, the, the tissue at the back of your eye, um, is not designed to perceive anything beyond this range. Okay, God has made it in such a way. Okay, so this region here. Uh, if you're familiar with the infrared and microwave, this is actually heat, okay, and also the radio wave. If you go even further, okay, so to call things like heat equals light is actually correct, okay. You know, if you have if you've got a cooking pot, if you put your hand closer to it, <coughs> you can feel the heat, right? Yeah, but you can't see it, okay. But if you kind of look closely you will see like uh, there is like a wavy movement of energy surrounding the pot that wavy thing is actually light okay the infrared light okay your your brain try to perceive that your retina cannot um, read it but it knows some kind of energy is coming out of it okay right so 
um, the basic ingredients of photosynthesis, we all know this, okay, is the carbon dioxide, which is pretty much abundant in the air, in our atmosphere, and also the water, which comes together with it, the nutrient, of course, the nutrient, and as the byproduct of the photosynthesis, you get your um, oxygen and also water. But don't think of oxygen is a comp as a complete waste. Okay, it's not a waste. Okay, it is. We call it as a byproduct because oxygen is also being consumed back by the plants, but not all of them. Okay, whatever remaining will be released back so that you can inhale and become healthy. All right. So when, when we talk about um, light in photosynthesis, almost all of plants on this planet appear green. Why is that? Okay, Like I said, science gives out all colors in the universe. Colors you can see, colors you cannot see. The ones that you can see is the rainbow color. And mostly, the plants will absorb within this region the red color and also the blue color wherever in the middle is not absorbed okay it is either transmitted meaning that it goes straight through the leaf or it is reflected okay due to the uh, physical properties of the leaf surface okay so that's why you have a very wide range of greens if you if you go to the forest right some plants they are all green of course some appear completely green like there's nothing else to it just green some are rather yellowish green some are rather bluish green but they are all still green okay, okay. and that is due to the presence of chloroplast okay chloroplast is the organelle okay organelle we call it organelle because um, it is a structure with its own membrane within um, the plant uh, compartment okay so you can see all these um, green uh, bubbles well they are not bubbles actually they are organelles these are the chloroplast okay in reality the chloroplast actually they are pressed to the cell wall like this okay they don't really float about because um, that will make it harder for the co2 to reach um, um, the ones um, in the middle so they are somewhat oppressed oppressed to the cell wall okay and <coughs> if you take uh, one chloroplast and do the cross section this is what you're going to look at and it has got many other stuff in it okay so the the cytoplasm of the chloroplast we have the cytoplasm outside um, our cell all of this is the cytoplasm okay cytoplasm the soup inside our cell the soup inside the chloroplast it's called the stroma and inside the chloroplast you have these um, stacks of pancake the green pancakes you know this guy here yeah so these this is the place where the magic happens actually okay so one of it is pretty much like this this is what we call as the thylakoid membrane thylakoid membrane okay okay when it is in the form of stacking Okay. In the form of stacking, we call it uh, granum. Okay, the plural, the many many um, stack stacks of granum, we call it grana. Okay, so get your English correct. Okay, inside the thylakoid membrane, there is an empty space. Okay, so the empty space in here, we call it as lumen. 
okay lumen this is the same smelling spelling as the um, uh, the way people quantify light intensity right okay so when when the light comes leaf the leaf is transparent okay the epidermis of the leaf is transparent so the light goes through and then hit these um, tarakot membranes the granum okay in the granum the reason it is green it's due to the presence of pigments okay there are many many pigments on this um, tarakot membrane and these pigments i think you can guess it now it's called chlorophyll it appears green because it absorbs um, the blue and also the red color but reflected back of the green color okay right so this is the the further um, looking um, zooming in um, into the chloroplast uh, structure Please get this correct, okay? You you need to be able to to draw this. I do expect you to be able to draw this structure of chloroplast because you have learned photosynthesis and this is all what it's all about, okay? So you have your leaf here, the cross section of the leaf. So this is the um, upper side of your leaf. Upper side of your leaf, scientifically we call it a daxial, okay? So this is the upper side. The downside of the leaf, we call it a back seal. Uh, there is um, there's the scientific word uh, for it. Okay, most plants, uh, they've got the stomata. Okay, so you, you've got your stomata here. Okay, stomata is singular, stomata plural. This will allow gas exchange and then the gas, the CO2 gas, will get into the mesophyll cell. Mesophyll cell are the cells that photosynthesize. There are many types of cells, okay? In in this one leaf, there are many types of cells, okay? The one at the top here, this is the epidermal cell. However, epidermal cells are not photosynthesizing. So, nothing much happen there okay but the moment the cells contain chloroplast and also photosynthesizing we call it mesophyll cells okay mesophyll this is from the greek word actually meso means middle uh, feel that means leaf the cells in the middle of the leaf okay and when you look closer at your um, chloroplast, you're zooming in, this is the structure, okay? So remember, this is your thylakoid membrane, okay? And then the stacking of your thylakoid, that is called the granum, okay? A stacking of this. There are many, many of granum, we call it grana. The cytoplasm or the soup inside your chloroplast, the watery part of it, we call it the astrostroma, okay, and um, also the chloroplast, you need to remember it has got its own membrane, yeah, <coughs> the outer membrane or also the inner membrane, okay, right, and this is the leaf from the C3 plant, the cross-section of the C3 plant, this is C3 plant, okay, that's why you have this kind of arrangement. If you look at um, the leaf um, in the C4 plant, this is the C4 plant. Okay, like example here, the maize. <coughs> um, there is a, a slightly different arrangement of the cells, but still it has got the mesophyll cells. Okay, and you can see here. The chloroplast always pressed or uh, uh, pressed against the wall, okay. And that is the reality, okay. It's never really floating about. You see the things in the middle here. That's kind of pushing um, the chloroplast um, to the wall, and this is your vacuole. 
All right. So in most plant, photosynthesis occurs in the leaves, primarily. Okay, it can also happen in the stem. It can also happen um, in the flower buds, but mainly in the leaves. Okay, and remember, chloroplasts contain all these common um, components, namely the stroma and the grana, the talicots, and so on, and the very pigments that makes the chloroplast uh, green is the chlorophyll and remember chlorophyll where does it present it is present on the surface of thylakoid membrane so this is your thylakoid membrane okay and your chlorophyll is present on the membrane okay right so when you look at the the stake of granum here this granum here your green pancake here when you do the cross-section it's actually not really an individual disc okay it is not individual disc however it is actually like a long host you know like your pipe host like this So it's like a long hose, which is being stacked upon each other that way. Think of it like your intestine, you know, intestine in, in your tummy. Kind of look yes. the same, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's pretty much like that. So this is all actually a very one long hose, which has been folded to make it appear like it is a stack of pancakes right so this is where the magic of the chloroplast um, happen okay all right before i go further i would like to to highlight something actually <clears throat> um i think i can open my whiteboard here so i need some space to write something not been used for a while <clears throat> just a simple one so um, photosynthesis why this thing I need to change the color how do I change the color Um, for some reason, this thing looks different from I previously used it. Uh, let's see. How do I change the color? Oh, it's okay. Maybe we can just use this. Oh, that's why. That's how. That's how. Okay. So, when you talk about your photosynthesis, this is not one process okay it's a collection of reaction okay scientists name it this way because there are two important reactions happen okay if you can divide it into two there is a photo reactions and also the synthesis reaction okay photo reactions happens on the thylakoid membrane Okay, can I make this smaller? Yeah. Okay. And this is where you get your photo system. Okay. All right. For the synthesis reaction, synthesis may, means you are manufacturing something. This is ha uh, happening in the stroma. Sorry. Stroma. Remember the soup or the cytoplasm of your chloroplast okay this is where you get the kelvin cycle okay <coughs> so when i go back to to our uh, lesson slides we are going to deal with this first okay 
this first part and then we only we deal with this because the product of the photo reactions will be used by the synthesis reactions okay without the products from this reaction the can recycle is not happening okay so please bear that in mind all right so let's get back here okay. so um let's zoom in at the surface level of this color code okay because that is where um, your photosynthesis system is, is located right so at the surface of your uh, telecom membrane you are going to see that uh, your photosynthesis system is actually part of the telecom membrane okay and this light harvesting complex the reason this is called uh, this way light harvesting complex is because your chlorophyll your chlorophyll is actually bounded to a pro protein okay chlorophyll never um, stay on its own it's always bounded to something which is um, a, a protein that's why um, chlorophyll it's called um, light harvesting complex chlorophyll and other pigments okay <clears throat> right so when I say other pigments even though chlorophyll is the one that we all talk about other pigments are also present okay so even the chlorophyll got uh, many types okay there's a chlorophyll A there is a chlorophyll B and also the carotenoids okay the one that directly involved in photosynthesis is actually chlorophyll A okay this is the one that um, run run the um, light dependent reaction okay or the photo reaction so what what's the use of other uh, pigments so these pigments act as the antenna pigments meaning that they capture various kind of energy coming up from the sun remember there are, there's lots of energy various um, wavelength the nanometer coming up from the sun to channel it to this chlorophyll A okay All right so look at the leaf here this is um, the maple tree you know maple tree um, maple tree it's the the leaf the leaf of the ca ca Canadian flag right uh, yes uh, yes yeah <clears throat> maybe some of you the lap your laptop uh, the brand is Acer right maybe some of you um, the brand is Acer so Acer is actually the scientific name for maple okay so this is the scientific name right so um, let me try to show you something okay <clears throat> so I want to show you just because the leaf appears green to you doesn't mean that other colors are not present okay all right okay Looking for good, yeah. Okay, let's look at this leaf first, or oh, maybe this one. Okay, this is the uh, Canadian leaf, right? The on on the flag. This is the Acer the leaf, um, uh, the leaf of the uh, maple tree. So in the summer, it looks green because uh, chlorophyll dominates. Um, the presence of the pigments inside the leaf does that mean other pigments are not present no other pigments are also present but chlorophyll mask the presence of other pigments okay 
when it's approaching to the fall or autumn, as things get cooler and the light it, uh, period during the day becoming shorter, the chlorophyll breaks down. Okay, <coughs> when this happens, other pigments that are present start to getting um, unmasked. Okay, meaning that they are now visible because the chlorophyll is not dominating anymore. So that's why it appears red. Okay, the red is actually the color of uh, other pigments. It's called anthocyanin. Okay, maybe I can write that to you. Anthocyanin. Anthocyanin. Okay, there, there, are, there are many pigments uh, in plant. There's an anthocyanin. There is um, carotene. Okay, there is um, xanthophyll. Okay, and so on. So, um, anthocyanin, this is usually um, red or purple. Purple. Carotene is usually orange, okay, and xanthophyll is usually yellow, okay, and all of these are present in the plants, but chlorophyll is usually um, the dominant one, chlorophyll, okay, so this is green. To prove it to you, you can use uh, a technique called paper leaf chromatography. Okay, so when you do this um, technique, like here, yeah, maybe this one, this looks uh, clearer. Okay, so basically you um, mash up your leaf, and then the solution of your leaf you dip it with a chromatography paper and after a while the cup so this is this is a drop of your leaf extract after a while the color the solution will travel upwards during the process whatever colors which originally present in the leaf will be separated even though it start with a green extract solution you can see that there's a um, various shades of green and also the presence of other colors okay so there are many examples here okay that you can look at okay and each of this color actually uh, belongs to various groups of pigments okay we've got a carotene yeah fuel fighting that's another one uh, which look, usually looks gray uh, xanthophyll and also uh, chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b right so that's why um, we, we well we don't really have autumn in our country but some plants they do experience chlorophyll uh, degradation and during that process uh, the color can change uh, from green to, uh, to other shades of color okay right so when you talk about the chlorophyll itself there is a two type of chlorophyll there are many types of chlorophyll actually a b c uh, all the way until e or even more but the one that you need to focus when it comes to photosynthesis it's chlorophyll a and b okay and the reason um uh, it's different it's be due to the uh the chemical structure at the end here okay the base structure fundamental structure is similar look at here this is the ring here the ring in the middle here, we call it as porphyry ring. Okay, so this looks similar in all classes of chlorophyll, but what differentiate is um, sometimes the methyl group or the double bond at the end. Okay, that will differentiate between chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. Okay, look at in the middle here. This is magnesium. Okay. That's why it appears green. The reason your chlorophyll absorb red and blue but tr reflect or transmit green is because the presence of magnesium in the middle of porphyrin ring. Okay? So, if we replace this magnesium with, let's say, um, iron, 
you know, ion. This whole thing now becomes your blood, your hemoglobin. You know, you, you got hemoglobin, right? Yeah. So this is the the wonder of nature. Your blood and chlorophyll is not that different. The only difference is your blood in the middle of the porphyrin ring, your hemoglobin, <coughs> it is iron rather than magnesium. Okay, when it's iron, that's why your blood appears red. Okay, red like the color of the rust. Okay, because the, the middle of the porphyrin it's iron. Okay, for the chlorophyll. It's green because of the presence of magnesium. Okay, right. So this is the um, various pigments that we talked about earlier, and they are uh, absorptance uh, spectrum. Okay, meaning that what is the highest amount of energy that it absorbs uh, throughout the spectrum. Okay, so we have various pigments here. We have the carotene, the beta carotene here. We got the chlorophyll. A and also the chlorophyll B. Remember, I said to you, um, photosynthesis absorb what color? Uh, red. Uh, red. Yes, red and blue. And it reflects green. green. Okay, and it is proven. It is proven here. Four hundred nanometer. This is the blue region. Okay, if you go before this, this is the UV. 700 nanometer, this is red. Whatever in the middle here, this is the yellow green region. Look at this region. There is no absorption here. Going down. The peak of absorption actually happens here. You see? This is the peak. And this is the blue region and then it it relaxes for a bit no absorption no absorption no absorption but when it comes to the red region you got another peak okay so that's why the chlorophyll appears green it doesn't absorb in this region okay you see not absorb or very minimum minimum absorption but it absorb greatly in the blue and the red region <coughs> okay right right so when you are talking about reactions in photosynthesis it involves substrates uh, some some enzymes to it but the whole idea is you combine the carbon dioxide with some water energize with the presence of any en light energy to get glucose and the byproduct of oxygen okay that is all to it okay so this is the first part of it remember photosynthesis two parts the photo reaction and also the Synthesis reaction number one, number two. Okay, number one happens in the thylakoid membranes here, number two happens in the stroma. Okay, so let's talk about in detail about the light ration. Okay, so light ration convert the solar energy to chemical energy. Okay, the solar energy this is your light, your solar energy. Even though it says solar energy here, it doesn't mean that other form of light cannot be used. Okay? We are talking about light quality here. Okay? As long as the light can give you 400 nanometer and uh, to 700 nanometer, even though the light is artificial, like LED light or your incandescent light, the photosynthesis will still happen. Okay? So the whole idea of it is to get the product. So this photo reaction here, it has got two products, namely ATP and NADPH. Okay? Adenosine 
triphosphate. Okay, what about NADPH? <clears throat> Do you still remember from your biochemistry class? NADPH? Yes, yes. What is it? Anybody know the full name of this guy? Nicotinamine. Okay. What else? Hey, you need to know this, okay? Because this is this is the, the main product of this um, photo reaction. Okay, nicotinamide, adenine, nicotinamide, adenine, dinucleotide phosphate. What about H? It's hydrogen. It's hydrogen. I know it's hydrogen, but how do you pronounce it? Now that it has got hydrogen in here, how do you pronounce it? Nicotinamide, adenine, dinucleotide phosphate. Whenever there is a H here, this molecule we call it in the reduced form. Reduced form. Remember from your chemistry. Um, I think. Let me let me try. Maybe I can put it here. Mm, oil. Oh, sorry. Oxidation is losing electrons. Okay. Reduction is gaining electron. Okay. So this is the formula oil reek. This thing is gaining electron because the presence of hydrogen. Hydrogen got electron, right? So it has, it has got extra electron here. So that's why it's called reduce. The reduction process has been done onto it. It is in reduced form. If it's only NADP, this is in oxidized form. Alright, so please remember that. Okay. The reason this is a um, energy currency because of the presence of hydrogen in here. If otherwise, it's just a like a regular molecule. Okay, right. So that is the light reaction and the, um, the products that we need from it. So this ATP and NADPH will be used by the Kelvin cycle to make from sh to make sugar from carbon dioxide. Okay, ATP from the light reaction provides energy for the sugar synthesis okay and adph pro provides the electrons remember because this is in a reduced form reduced form meaning that it has gained electron okay it provides electron for the reduction of carbon dioxide to glucose okay so the co2 in the kelvin cycle it needs to be reduced first meaning that it needs to gain extra electron for it to be converted to glucose. Remember, you get your CO2 in the form of what? In the atmosphere, in the in the form of gas. Okay, gas. Then it becomes, it dissolves in here. It becomes liquid. Now you need to change it into sugar. To to turn it into sugar, you need to reduce it. And to reduce it, you use NADPH. Okay, and it is worth noting that the Kelvin cycle itself it has got three phases. You can divide into three phases. Okay, the first phase of Kelvin cycle it's called fixation. Okay. The second part of the Kelvin cycle, it's called reduction. The 
the third part of the chemical cycle is called regeneration. Okay. We'll look um, at it uh, in a bit detail uh, later, but in, in essence, this is the whole idea. Okay. Most of your ATP and NADPH will be used throughout this. Okay. It's true your ATP can be used at other places, but this is a very energy consuming um, reaction. So without this, nothing of this will happen. Okay. Right. So the light dependent reaction, which is the photo reactions. Okay. The events very simple. Light hits the reaction center of the chlorophyll in the chloroplast. And then the chlorophyll will start to vibrate with energy. And this causes the water to break apart. You got your byproduct of oxygen. And the hydrogen that remains in the chloroplast attached to the NADPH, NADP to become NADPH. Okay. So um, let me see. Is there any. One moment, okay. I should have changed this uh, sequence of the slide. Okay, not to worry. Okay, so this is the uh, the overview of, of what's happening. We'll we'll look at it um in the detail. Okay, and the movement of electron from photosystem two to photosystem one. Remember, where is this location? This is on the where is it? Surface of thylakoid. Membrane. Membrane. Correct. Surface of thylakoid membrane. Okay. So that's why you you are introduced with the anatomy first. Okay. Your thylakoid stacks um, sticking sticks of um, your green pancakes, and right on the top of here you get your photosystem. It's actually part of the membrane. Okay. And there are two types of photosystem, namely photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. Sequentially, it is photosystem 2 that happens first, then only photosystem 1. The reason the numbering is kind of funny, because scientists found this system first. Photosystem 1. <coughs> Historically, this was found first, but biochemically, this happens first. Photosystem two happen first. Okay, so get it right. So um, it happens um, in a sequence from photosystem two, and then through the electron transport change, and then go towards the photosystem one, and eventually to the NADPH. Okay, right. So this is the whole. Movement of electron. Remember, this is the movement of electron, okay? From this photosystem, go up, down, up, down. We call it non cyclic photophosphorylation. There is other name for this, okay? It's called Z scheme. Why? Because it looks like Z. Okay? So it's called the Z scheme. Look at here. You got your ATP. You got your NADPH. And these will be soon used by your Kelvin cycle. Okay? So two types of photosystem cooperate together. Only one of them is not, uh, nothing is, is going to work. Okay? They need to work together. Okay? So oxygen, where does it originate uh, from? It is from the H2O. Okay, so the splitting of um, water molecule, you get your oxygen. What happens to the hydrogen? So the hydrogen, the electrons of the hydrogen, is the one that travels in the Z scheme. You can see right. The, the electron traveling go up and down, up and down. So this actually from the hydrogen, hydrogen of water. This, okay, right. 
it is from this electron fill in the chlorophyll and then it goes up okay what happened to the oxygen it will be split as oxygen half oxygen and then when another split happens you will get your oxygen molecule and this process here the splitting of um, water to produce oxygen we call it photo this is okay lysis lysis here that means the breakdown of something <coughs> okay and yeah let's get some terminologies correct over here i'll just make it sorry okay so this is your photosystem too can you see this p680 this p680 this is actually a special chlorophyll chlorophyll a remember from earlier there are many types of pigments and there's two types of chlorophyll so this p680 this is chlorophyll chlorophyll a okay special type of chlorophyll a and this is also known as your reaction center so there's a lot of synonym here reaction center is equals to p680 p680 is your special chlorophyll a right okay then what happens exactly so on the surface of your thylakoid membrane this p680 oh why why does it call p60 i forgot to mention this 680 actually referring to 680 nanometer meaning that this amount of energy if you can recall from the action spectrum um, I think it should be this light over here oh. have I gone too far? oh this thing so 680 which is somewhere around here this is actually red okay. 680 nanometer sorry nanometer okay so, so when, when that, that hap when that happens this is the only energy this is energy actually okay this is energy when this energy is received by the chlorophyll here this is the only energy that is able to eject electron out of this chlorophyll so this chlorophyll molecule has electron okay a loose electron you can call it a loose electron so this loose electron can be ejected out okay it can get excited and ejected out to get it ejected out only one kind of energy is able to do that and that energy is this energy 680 nanometer so what happens if other energies comes in so this is your reaction center remember reaction center equals to 680 equals to special chlorophyll a the reality is if you look down the um the thylakoid membrane your reaction center is actually being surrounded by other pigments there are many other pigments okay when the sun comes or your your light source whatever comes it brings with it many kind of energy maybe the moment it hits the first uh, pigment here so the pigment here can be uh, any of your antenna pigment remember you, you see it here your antenna pigments your antenna pigments can be uh, anthocyanin can be carotene can be chlorophyll b can be anything so maybe when it hits here the energy is 400 
40 nanometer, which is blue. Can 440 activate your reaction center, the P680? It can't because the energy is not correct. So, like a pi playing ping pong, these pigments will start passing the energy to the neighboring pigments. So, the passing of energy from one pigment to another pigment will reduce the energy. Now it becomes lower in energy so let's say it becomes 500 nanometer. Okay, Remember one thing about physics long longer wavelength lambda means wavelength okay longer lambda longer wavelength equals to low energy shorter wavelength or shorter lambda equals to high energy okay so please bear this in mind because this is kind of opposite long wavelength equals low energy shorter wavelength equals high energy meaning that 440 nanometers even though the value is less than 500 nanometer the energy here is higher okay so the energy here when it is transferred to the next molecule the energy now has become lower thus the corresponding energy value in the form of lambda it's getting more 500 nanometer so 500 nanometer still cannot activate 680 so the passing keep on continue so maybe here it becomes 550, pass here it becomes 650, pass here it becomes 770, and eventually when it pass here it becomes 780. You can see the passing? So with each passing, the energy becomes lesser and lesser and lesser. So the beauty and wisdom of having the antenna pigment it protects the reaction center from excessive energy okay so when the 680 has been achieved the chlorophyll will become excited and the electron gets ejected out okay so when it gets ejected out the excited chlorophyll will have the tendency to go back to the ground state when this happens it will be caught by all this stuff here and this is we call as the electron acceptor sorry I need to write it electron this thing electron acceptor okay yeah so from PO fighting, this is the primary electron acceptor, it will be passed to plastoquinone. Plastoquinone, it will pass to cytochrome B6 complex, and from cytochrome, it will pass to blastocyanin. So with each passing, the energy becomes lesser and lesser and lesser. To the point, it becomes to the 700 nanometer. Okay? So when this happened, 700 nanometer, the energy is less than 680 nanometer. Why it become less? Because it has been passed down through the electron acceptor. Okay, something else happening uh, over here, but I will explain it in a bit. We'll focus on this first. So at the end of this um, road here in the photosystem one. The 700 nanometer will activate the chlorophyll in the photosystem 1. So the chlorophyll become excited, it will eject the chlorophyll out and it will be accepted by this section electron acceptor. Okay, So it will be accepted by the electron acceptor, um, it's a membrane bound iron sulfur proteins and then it will be passed to the ferrodoxin pretty much like over here and finally it will be passed to the NADP molecule okay so NADP molecule will be attached with the final electron 
which originates from here. When this happens, it becomes reduced. Okay. So that's how you get your NADPH. What about ATP? So ATP, um, it's, it's slightly different. It's due to this process, okay? Chemoosmosis. Okay. So, so what happens, happens is, this is similar, okay? This part here is similar to here. It's just a different drawing. So remember, this is your electron transport change, right? Your electron transport chain. As your electron moves down the chain from what? So you need to know all this name, okay? From the viophytin to pastoquinone to cytochrome to pastocyanin. When that happens, all of your electron receptors, they are embedded in the thylakoid membrane. Remember, this is your thylakoid membrane. It is embedded. When this happens, the, the side of your electron receptor, which is facing the outside, remember, outside of it, this is stroma. The stroma is filled with hydrogen ions, H+. So much H+, going in here. It's just hydrogen. Nothing else, just hydrogen. So, this hydrogen is actually somewhat attached to this uh, electron receptor as well. So, with the movement of electron from here and then to here, this electron receptor, it gets wobbling. It's wobbling, it wobble, and then it will turn the face from the stroma to the lumen. When it turns the face, the hydrogen from the stroma side will be transferred into the lumen. Okay, and this keeps on happening. Okay, so over the time, all the hydrogen in here will start filling in the lumen. Remember, this is inside your thylakoid membrane. Okay? Hydrogen here in the lumen. So you will have hydrogen a lot now. Suddenly lots of uh, hydrogen. The, the faster your electron transport change ha is happening due to the, your light, because you just, you know, early in the morning, there's a lot of sunlight, the more hydrogen will be pumped into the lumen of the thylakoid. Lots of hydrogen. Okay. So when this happens, <coughs> there is um, an imbalance of hydrogen. Now you have less hydrogen in the stroma, but more in the lumen. And remember, nature always wants to achieve equilibrium. Right. So that's when the chemiosmosis happens. Okay. So the hydrogen cannot go out to the stroma through the membrane there is no opening except here so this is a type of protein here a special protein it's called atp synthase this is the only tunnel into which the hydrogen can enter okay oh i'm sorry i think i got it um slightly wait do i get it wrong because I, I, I keep, keep calling it this the stroma side. Oh, I'm sorry. I got it. I got it wrong. Sorry. Uh, because um, the the convention is stroma is usually on the top, lumen is uh, at the bottom. I, I just noticed that um, this picture it's the other way around. Okay. So actually, this is not the stroma. Okay. We follow um we follow this um the labeling on, on this figure. Let me see. Can I find the eraser? Can I find it? Is this the eraser? Okay. How do I erase? I'm sorry, okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But the story is still the same. It's just about the labeling now. <coughs> okay. So this is, this side here is your stroma. Stroma, and this side here is your thylakoid. Let's let's thylakoid, thylakoid lumen. 
Okay. So, so the hydrogen, hydrogen from your stroma, due to the movement of electron down in that trans electron transport change, will be moved towards the lumen. Okay. And eventually, the lumen will have lots of hydrogen. Lots of hydrogen. Okay. This hydrogen needs to reach equilibrium. To reach equilibrium, it cannot go out through any opening except the ATP synthase. Okay, you see the tunnel here. So ATP synthase, it has got this head here. You see the head here? So the head here is called the rotor head. Rotor head. When hydrogen passing through the tunnel here, it will start to turn this rotor head. Okay, it starts to turn it. When it turn it, this rotor head is actually attached with two things. Okay, it has got um, attachment site here. One is attached with ADB, adenosine diphosphate. One is attached with phosphate. Okay, so when the rotor head turn due to the movement of hydrogen from the lumen side to the stroma side, this will jam the ADP and P together. They will be combined. Okay? When they combine, you will get your ATP. Okay? So that's how you get your ATP. Okay? So the more hydrogen from the lumen side travels back to the uh, stromal side, the more ATP you will get. Okay? <coughs> Alright, so that is all for the photoreaction. Okay? Remember, you get your NADPH from the movement of electron which originates in the reaction center that is combined with NADP combined with the electron for the hydrogen and then you get your NADPH so this is the first product and then you also get your ATP okay your energy currency this is for energy currency this is for the reduction right both of which will be used for the Kelvin cycle right okay so and then this is the summary for the photo reaction or the light dependent reaction overall input is light energy and water and for the output you get ATP you get an NADPH and also you get the byproduct as oxygen right so this is the ingredient light as energy what kind of light 680 nanometer and also 700 nanometer okay and also the water <clears throat> All right. Now, now we, we come, come to, to the, the second, second part of the photosynthesis, which is the light independent reaction. reaction. Some book call this um, as dark reaction, but I strongly suggest you don't call this a dark reaction, okay? Because this thing is not happening in the dark. The reason um, old scientists call this dark reaction because this does not use light directly. It still needs light, but indirectly. So that's why they call it direction. But it, this does not happen in the dark, okay? At night, this thing cannot happen at all, right? So here's the Kelvin cycle. So you've got three phases here. Let's, let's divide that into three. Got this. So you've got your phase one, which is your carbon fixation. What happens is, with the help of Rubisco, the enzyme, Rubisco, okay. So Rubisco, um, this is an enzyme, the very important enzyme for CO2 fixation. Okay. The full name of Rubisco, you need to know this, okay. Ribulose 
Peace for Spain. C stands for carboxylase. O stands for oxygenase. Therefore, this is an ancient enzyme that can catalyze two reactions carboxylase reaction, carboxylation, and also the oxygenation reaction. Okay, but for the purpose of carbon reaction, we don't want the Rubisco to do oxygenation reaction, we want the Rubisco to do carboxylation reaction. This one here, okay, right. So, so the, the Rubisco, Rubisco will help with the attachment of carbon dioxide with RUBP. RUBP is the 5-carbon sugar, okay, which is floating about inside. What, what, what is this environment? This is inside your stroma. All in here, okay. We are not in the thylakoid membrane anymore, okay. We are outside now. We are in the soup of your chloroplast, which is your stroma. So the combination of um, carbon dioxide with the RUBP, the enzyme involved in here is Rubisco, you will start creating 3-phosphoglycerate, which is will be converted with an another enzyme to become 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. So from 3-phosphoglycerate, Another phosphate will be added at the end. Remember, you can see here, there's only one phosphate here. And then another phosphate will be added at the end. Now, two location at location 1 and location 3, you got your phosphate with the help of ATP. Okay, So ATP will phosphorylate 3-phosphoglycerate to become... 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate and in the process ATP becomes ADP okay and then this ADP here can go back to um, the ATP synthase so that it can be jammed again with the phosphate to become ATP and this cycle continue over and over and over again okay so from this 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate this thing will be reduced okay when it is reduced it will become glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate okay or known as g3p okay and this is the reduction phase when we call it reduction we don't use atp anymore we use nadph this thing this guy here Okay, so NADBH will reduce um, this phosphoglycerate to become glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, and this is only 3 carbon. Okay, 2 times of this, you will get your glucose. However, um, you start with a lot of carbons at one time, but not all of the carbons is used to make the glucose. Only three of it exit. Okay, three of it exit. What happened to the rest? The rest of it will be regenerated. Okay, with the help of ATP. Okay, so ATP will change some of G3P to become. Ribulose bisphosphate, the original 5 carbon sugar. Okay, so when this has been regenerated, you got your um, ribulose uh, bisphosphate. This can go back to the uh, first step of the Calvin cycle to join back with carbon dioxide with the help of Rubisco, and then the cycle continue on and on and on again. <coughs> okay. So, so that's, that's why, why and this is called a cycle, cycle and in essence that is all that is happening okay remember Kevin cycle has three phases fixation reduction and regeneration the, the first product of of the sugar comes out at the reduction 
face. Okay, you got your GTP. There is many um um synonyms for GTP. Okay, the Grissolder Hat Three Phosphate. Some books call this um um Trios Phosphate. It's the same thing. Price phosphate. Why? Because there's a three phosphate in here. Trios because the carbon is the sugar is three carbon. Okay, and this is the detail, uh, a bit more detail. What is happening? This is from a book. Okay, steps of photosynthesis. Okay, so number one, CO two combines with the acceptor RUBP, the five carbon sugar, forming PGA. Okay, and then this PGA is unstable. It will be will be reduced to become the triose phosphate in a two step ration requiring ATP and NADH, and then some of it will exit as triose phosphate but most of it will be returned to the cycle okay the reason it follows the cycle to make it sustainable okay uh, the plants do not want any of its um, substances to suddenly run out okay they want it like to have continuous supply of it that's why it's in the form of cycle okay so and then this is the summary of the light independent reaction or your kelvin cycle you, you can, can call it Kelvin cycle, cycle. Oh, sorry. but do, do not call it the reaction. Okay. So, so this is the input. input. You, you use the ingredient CO2, ATP, and NDPH. So this is from your, these two from your where? From your light dependent reaction CO2 from where from the atmosphere or maybe from the respiration of mitochondria from cellular respiration it can be that as well cellular respiration the output of your Kelvin cycle is actually it's not really glucose okay the first thing um, you need to write this um, triose Phosphate or what is the synonym? Let's look at look at back. G three P glycerol dehyde three phosphate. G three P P glycerol dehyde three phosphate. All right. Okay. okay, and that, that is your reactions in photosynthesis in general. Okay, right. And I'm going to stop up to this point because I want you to be able to absorb what you have learned so far today. But remember, you have learned about the organelle which is involved in this process, which is the chloroplast. So you need to be able to draw the organelle and label all the components in the organelle, what is the thylakoid, thylakoid membrane, the lumen, the stroma, and also the membrane, okay? And then there are two important reactions that happen, which is the light-dependent reactions. You need to know um, the products are ATP and NADPH, okay? and then this product will be used by the second reaction of photosynthesis, which is the Kelvin cycle or light-independent reactions. And, and the Kelvin, Kelvin cycle has got three phases, phases the fixation phases, phases reduction phase, and also regeneration phase. phase. And from here, you will get your uh, sugar, which is your start with your G3P, glycerol dehydrate phosphate. And from this three carbon sugar, which is also known as the triose phosphate, it can give rise to a more complex sugar. Okay? Um, it can become your glucose, it can become your cellulose, your starch, and many other organic compounds. But this is the beginning, right? Okay, so um, that is all for today. We're going to stop up to this point. Uh, we can continue the rest of it um, um, in, in other lectures. <coughs> I'm sorry if my voice is not uh, very great. I'm still suffering from last week. Um, okay, so um, any question? I'll give you until... I'll be around for five, five minutes, minutes until around 9.25 for you to ask any question, okay? <coughs> uh, uh.
Doktor. Ya. Yeah. About the attendance in 2019. About the attendance in 2019. How? Don't worry about attendance. Uh, probably I'll, I'll give you a separate paper later. My, my RA will give it to you. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Sure. Uh, I, I, I can't listen to you. There's so much noise at the back. I tried to uh, uh, contact you, but I didn't find you. What? What? I know somebody is talking, but I cannot listen to anything. I'm, I'm so sorry, I can't, I can't listen to you. Maybe you can ask me during the lab time. If you got trouble with your microphone, maybe you can ask me during the lab time, okay? Or on the chat stream. We got the chat stream here as well. Right. Okay, I'll be around here to to listen for any question until um nine twenty five or so. If you got anything, you can ask me, okay? The, lect the lecture note is in the folder. We, we have the classroom folder, right? So go back to the general gui guidelines, guidelines that, that I give in the first week. week. Follow that. that. In, in the post in the first week, week I also posted that. that. So, so just, just follow the instruction, instruction you will find the folder for the lesson. My Putra Blast was acting up yesterday, so I cannot access at all. <coughs> I'll make a duplicate whatever that we have on the, our communal folder. But um, you, you see, Putra Blast, the moment semester ends, everything will be gone. Okay. I can't access it, and probably you cannot too. But if that's why I put it uh, on the cloud storage, so you can access it as long as OneDrive is in business. <laughs> okay, um, no, no more question. question. You, you can, can ask me again on um, if you got anything, okay, on during the lab, lab time. So, uh, our lab, lab uh, on this Wednesday, Wednesday. So, so please come. come. We'll continue wherever we left off, and also we'll do a small tutorial to help you with your lesson. Mm, I'm sorry, <clears throat> and um, uh, please be on time, okay. Uh, because, because I might have things at 10 a.m., so, so I, I need to finish um, the session with you um, as soon as possible. Right? right. Okay. That's, That's all for today, today. and thank, thank you for coming. coming. I'll see you on Wednesday. Wednesday. Bye. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor.